Okay, but uh, I really want to try and keep as near to time as we can. So um, I'd like to introduce uh, Andrew Dully from the University of Leicester. And uh, he's going to tell you a little bit about uh, how they're rolling out with their, their programme there. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Debbie. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm quite in awe of the people that are here today. There's some quite uh, um, serious people here who have already engaged with por uh, the portfolio of Pebble and so forth. But I am reassured um, there are some people who are just uh, um, embarking on that journey as such there. Okay. I'm very early in, in that sort of process there. Um, I've been told, uh, well, I've got to keep this short because of my throat. Um, Debbie says she'll cut it if I go over 20 minutes. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, really, and then. Um, this is basically what we're trying to do really is shift from a paper-based clinical assessment portfolio that we've used for since 2004 um, to let's go for it innovative uh, sort of technology as such there. I was, I was quite surprised my manager said yes let's go for it so um, and it's kind of landed on my my plate as such then. Oops. So oops, I've gone wrong already. So, a little bit about us, really. Um, we're the School of Operating Department Practice. Uh, we train operating department practitioners to work in theatres, allied health. Um, we are a, quite a small profession. Again, since 1976, um, the assumption of, of theatres is that you see a, a surgeon, an anaesthetist, and maybe some nursing staff mopping the fevered brow of the surgeon as he operates. It's long gone. Okay, he can mop his own brow. He's <laughs> quite capable of doing that. Um, so if you want to be a radiographer, you train to be a radiographer. If you want to be a physio, you train to be a physio. If you want to be a pharmacist, you train to be a pharmacist. If you want to work in operating theatres, you need to train to work in operating theatres. And we provide that. We are a um, team of four. We just lost uh, a staff member who's moved on to other pastures at the moment. So we have 60 students a year, two cohorts, 13 and 30, spring and summer. Uh, we're based in the University of Letters Medical School. That isn't it. That's the new one that they're actually building at the moment. Um, the old one is next to a big Leicester graveyard, uh, which is no surprise where we get our cadavers from. Um, I don't know where they're going to get them from there. And I, I believe that my office, I'm going to get my own office again, is somewhere in that little block of Lego there, which is going to be nice for me. Okay. Um, we are um, quite proud of ourselves. 100% of our graduates are in employment. There's a massive demand for our uh, ODPs, as it were, out there. Um, and that just tells us that what we do, we create fit to practice, purpose and award practitioners at the end, meeting all the um, requirements of the health and care professions, councils, standards of efficiency, and likewise. Usually in the top three uh, of the National Student Survey for um, ODP schools in the country. Um, we've never been top, we've always been second, I must admit. Okay? To be top, you must have a shotgun over your students while you're doing, getting them to vote. Okay. So, um, what was our need then for this? Um, well, uh, our professional body, the College of Operating Department Practitioners, brought out a new curriculum, uh, BSc Honours in Operating Department Practice, so a big driver. That was also fueled by drivers in, in working practices in the NHS. Um, and essentially in there, they, they split it down into a practice portfolio and a professional portfolio. And so we had an ideal opportunity here to reevaluate what we do um, from the portfolio we've got. Um, it allowed us also to look at the way we teach, we, where the <coughs> students are learning and how we assess our students. And <coughs> practice has changed, okay? Um, clinical practice changes quite rapidly with research and everything <coughs> practice that we use. So there was a lot of change going on. So what we thought, well, we need to change as well, come in line with some things. Plus, um, the med school, uh, a couple of years ago, started giving their students iPad Airs as a learning technology. They got that free on the course, okay? So we had a little corridor we're on, and we just made a little shout, yeah, go, hey, hey, what about us? Okay, go ahead. So we can give our students an iPad Air. So we now have this innovative platform that we can use for learning, teaching, and so forth, okay? So the idea of using a portfolio without paper is, is one of the things that we really needed to go for. Okay. So a lot of change going on. Um, and this reminds me of an old friend of mine, Confucius, you might know him, he's quite old now. He said a scholar who lives in comfort is not fit to be called a scholar. 
and I think we're all subjected to change all the time, okay? If you're comfortable in what you're doing, it means you're not evaluating, you're not moving forward and so forth, okay? So I'm kind of embracing that change that we need to do. We need to do something different. So, I hope it will change, okay. So, theatres is, operating theatres is a very unique environment for learning, okay? It's quite high pressured, it's critical, and, um, we don't have a great deal of free time, okay? One patient is operated on, once they leave the theatre and go through the perioperative care process, another patient is coming through <coughs> and operated are gone. Maybe it's a long case, we might find some mentors and some free time with students, okay? But we, we're not really privy to that uh, protected time. They talk about protected time, but we never see it protected. You have to make time, the opportunity to do that. Um, there's a lot of pressure in there, there's a lot of change in staffing going through. Many staff that come into theatre who do not have perioperative skills, okay, cannot therefore teach our students the skills. They can hand down other skills, but they're not, you know, um, deemed competent in that. So we, we lack that support in that sense, okay. Um, in an operating theatre, the interprofessional environment is quite complex. Surgeons, anaesthetists, med students. ODPs, nurses, managers, and so forth. Okay, and we have a huge interprofessional agenda, working agenda, and portfolio that we have to do for that as well. I don't know if you're all involved with the IP agenda, but we still find there's a silo mentality going on. The unipersonal stuff goes on. Okay, and that all affects teaching, learning, and assessment, and it brings all those issues of halo effect, errors of levity and severity, and so forth, when we come to assess our students. Theatre is changing, and uh, this isn't really a modern theatre, they, they, they look much different to this these days, okay, a lot of stuff now is digital, it all hangs off the ceiling, okay, but we're being watched by governance, by policy and so forth, okay, and so often working in a theatre you might, because I see what your eyes are doing, you're focusing on things like this, you know, the centre of attention being the surgery, often task focused, and we might see that in any profession. Um, mm. By just looking at the psychomotor things here, in terms of um, our um, assessment, it's not going to be very valid. It doesn't capture everything, okay, what's going on. Okay? So I've just used the picture to say that we're being watched. Okay? But if you're a cameraman, this chap here, okay, and you're trying to find, uh, deem somebody competent, okay, you wouldn't necessarily just focus on the operation. That cameraman would walk around, would he not? And we mentioned that 360 look at assessment. Okay? And this is where we think we can win and improve our validity um, of our assessment. So, read the literature and you talk about competence in any practitioner, okay, and the, the word fragmented can come out. If you're putting all these learning outcomes in there, or practice outcomes as we like to come, okay, it can become very fragmented, just really a series of tasks that to be achieved and ticked off and say, I've done that, I've done that, I've done that, okay? And that's always the problem we get, okay? We don't want that to happen because it's not valid, it's not reliable, and really, are they going to be that competent at the end of their program if it was just a series of tasks that they carried out, okay? It's not really a holistic learning there, okay? We also find then that once you're using an assessment process, it became um, perhaps a stale process that mentors that have been in the process for some time and so forth were just really going through the motions of signing off and putting some evidence and so forth. Okay? And we found that maybe um, that was being a, a bit complacent with what they were doing and we think we should re-energise them okay, with that, okay? get them to think more about mentoring, teaching, learning and assessment. Now at the University of Leicester, okay, I'm in a med school, uh, it's not a nursing school at all. We don't have cross modules or anything like that going on. We are our own school <coughs> and so forth. Do a little bit of stuff with the meds. We can do some simulation stuff. We can use a dissector room and stuff. Um, so we, we can't run a mentor module. <coughs> our area commissioners commission two other local nursing universities to run mentor modules for everybody. And so our ODPs have to access that mentor module as mentors. Unfortunately, and I hope you'll agree with me, it is very focused on the NMC's paperwork, sign-off, mentoring and so forth. And my experience is there's not much focus on actually mentoring, teaching, learning and the process of assessment. 
which then leads to question the validity, reliability of our assessments, okay, if we're not focusing on the actual process there. So, brought us then to what frameworks then, because I think this was the, the, the gist I was given then, what, um, how can we put a framework into our portfolio, our pebble? Well, what we want to do then is make sure that we captured the three domains of competence, okay, uh, which would be psychomotor stuff, we can certainly do that. We need the cognitive aspect of uh, uh, clinical practice there as well, but we also need, according to our curriculum and everybody else's curriculum, is the professional aspect, the skills, and all those three areas have got to be captured. Generally, the focus is, tends to be task and a little bit of cognition, and professional skills get a nod now and then in a little report <coughs> back, okay? But there's massive emphasis now on professional skills. We see that in the governance and what the NHS is doing with their, their constitution. So, um, we think then, okay, because we're still earlier, that we can actually capture more of those domains evidence, okay, by the way that the, the workbooks, for instance. I'm not going to talk about how we put our workbook together, but you, you've got some ideas about that. Um, we also, the literature is still very focused on that we still should have some criterion-based assessment, okay, that can help us with that. And what we also found with mentors is that they hardly wrote anything about evidence. They never mentioned they observed the student or they discussed anything with the student. They never mentioned about any standard of quality of work or their, their, their need for support and so forth. It was just, they kind of repeated the outcome and said, yes, they've done it, and that's about it. And so we thought we could actually get that a bit more detailed. Okay, so we, uh, and some, as again, some universities do this, we're going to use Bondi's competency <coughs> grading scale. Is anybody familiar with Bondi's scale? Five point rating scale for competence? Okay. Well done. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you can, you can grade uh, a student on a one to five um, point system. So, um, for instance, two is marginal, need a, lot, need a lot of support, not very skilled at anything they do. Three, safe when assisted. Four, supervised, five, independent. Much like um, Benner's model of novice to expert, but we can't make experts out of undergraduates, so bonding works quite nice. And that's the framework we can use. Okay? But instead of getting the mentor to write all that detail, we can use the tools in the workbook to just click the number. Okay? The student knows what that means, the mentor knows what that means, and it kind of works for us. Okay? So that's going to be our, our framework as we're going to fit that into... Uh, the workbooks as we go through. And we're hoping again that will improve the validity <coughs> and reliability of our competence here. Okay. Making it more efficient for the mentors with a lack of time, rather than writing things out, okay, click predetermined statements, okay, and we, we can use assessor fields and, and we can marry that through. So for us, it's a brave new world. We're, we're going to um, deliver a BSc in an operating department practice. There are a few universities doing that already, and there's a few that aren't doing it. It's all down to commissions and funding, okay? And getting practice to buy into it, okay? So we, we, we want to make sure that the new course is different, the pebble pad point of view will make it different for them, okay? The HCPC, Healthcare Professions Council, standards of proficiency have also changed to reflect the curriculum and so forth, so we can, that can help us quite nicely on there, okay? I've been through two major changes in changing curriculums before for operating department practice, so um, bring it on, let's do it again. Okay, I'm ready for it, I've been through it, okay? Um, Pebble's going to help us go through that a lot easier, I think, okay? Um, Socrates said, the secret of change is to focus all of your energy not on fighting the old, but building the new. Okay? And that's where we're trying to focus there. Okay? What we've got isn't bad. Okay? We're not going to fight it, but we're going to keep some of the elements of it, but we're going to move forward with this new platform. So, it's about this for us, I think, and, and our, our friends from Ireland there, okay, this is the big change that I've been faced with then, is, is this shift of thinking, this paradigm shift, okay, from paper-based, where people like to write, like to turn pages and sign things off, they feel confident with that, okay, to a new way of thinking, okay. and it's a paradigm shift for staff, 
okay, for us, okay, I've got resistance within my staff group, you could imagine. Um, mentors, they are going to be the biggest shift, okay, because they, they're the ones that have got to change. Students won't know because they're going to be brand new when they start in September, so they'll know nothing different about it. So that should be okay with that, okay. Managers and so forth, they're, they're coming on board. And lately it's been the Andrew Gully Roadshow going around um, all my South Trent hospitals. So that's up to Chesterfield, Nottingham, Boston, Grantham, <coughs> Northamptonshire, going around and promoting this, you know, subtly feeding it in. So I've um, noted I'm an external examiner for another university and they've took on Pebble and they had a, an IT department develop their workbooks and so forth. We don't have any, it's all come down to us at the moment. And they've just rolled it out straight, completely out there. And I found that amazing thinking about change management and so forth, that you didn't pilot it and look for your problems with that, okay? And now they're dealing with the, the issues there. My advice, pilot it and see what you're going to be faced with. I took 10 random students across all our hospitals, 10 hospitals, they there, so the first year, second years, they're running a long course at the moment. I then got some random mentors as well to involve with the pilot. Designed a workbook around a module, okay, kept it very similar to the paper base, so instead of having pages, there were the buttons, <coughs> okay, so to turn your pages, you flick the button, so the things were still familiar to them, okay, but um, the more access to information, there were some links I could pop in there and so forth, and we were able then to uh, just run that out there in the hospitals. I ran it for about a month and a half, Easter and so forth, so there were some dates that people couldn't quite make. And what I was probably going to expect was lots and lots and lots of phone calls at home saying I can't, I can't do this. I only had one, um, and I was on about an hour with this student and the mentor. We can't do anything, we can't write it, we can't do it. I, I want to put this on this student's work like this. And What are you looking at? And just, I'm looking at this, well, what view are you looking in? And it's all about that view. Okay, edit or view, and that's the trickiest thing we found with it. Okay, um, sent out an online evaluation for that uh, with questions asking some you know quality stuff, really feelings towards it. Okay, how did you get on with logging in? No problems. Okay, how to find navigating? No problems. It's looking very <coughs> rosy, but the biggest problem we've come across then is Wi Fi. It is incredible that I thought this shouldn't be a problem. Some trusts, yes, not a problem. Others, no chance. No, students can't have that. Your doctors have them, but you can't have it. Okay? Why is that? That's not fair. Okay? And the reason for I can't understand the reason for that. Okay? So students, the clever, okay, I said to them, don't forget to tether it to your phone. You've got your iPad, if it doesn't work, okay, tether it to your phone. And some of them have gone round it that way. We can use it on PC, as we know, but we've got the iPad platform, we wanted to use that, okay? The phone app has got rave reviews, okay? But there's some development we could see that could be potentially made better with the phone app for us, okay? But that worked really well for us. So, here's the Wi-Fi, okay? No major issues yet that we can't eye now, I don't think, with, with rolling out what we're seeing at the moment. So, challenges then. Um, my enthusiasm is a challenge for my team. I'm keen, okay, and it puts people off, which is okay, and I have to rub them back in a little bit, okay, and I'm, I'm enthusiastic about anything that's new, really, okay. Wi-Fi has been the problem, <coughs> NHS IT has been the problem, okay. The university was a big problem, okay. Now, I read in the, in the Pebble pamphlet earlier um, about the license, simple licensing. Yeah, just sign up, it's all yours, and that's what we thought. Quality assurance three months of negotiating with them. IT, that to negotiate with them. Was it, will it fit in with our systems? No, it's not going to touch Blackboard. It's not going to do this. It's not going to do that. No, we don't want that then. We don't want And we had a, quite a battle with all the government side of the university. The risk. They would not take the risk. It took me a lot to convince them to do it. They gave us the nod. I said, do you know how much this is? And how much you've spent on whatever? This, this is actually quite a bargain, you know, like this. And everybody will agree for that. But we've got them to say that now. They have now given us the nod. We've gone ahead. We've made the decision. We're going in that road there. I'm buying into some other software. Um, um, I'm not telling them. I cannot go through that again. It's, it's just, I just cannot go through it. It was just 
So there's no need for them. No, it's no risk there. It's just an online thing that students can access, and I get them an account. That's it. So that, that's been a real challenge. I think. <laughs> My skills. Um, I'm not a learning technologist. I don't have any support there. So it's something you might have to think about when you're doing it. That you will have to develop your skills quite a lot on using Pebble and so forth. Okay. You get. You get to it in the end, it's intuitive, okay? You just need to spend some time with it and then you'll get used to it. Um, logins would be, and Debbie warned me this, you know, they'll, they'll forget their logins and so forth. So when I went around doing the road show, okay, guys, log in, I forgot my password. Yet I sent them an email, bring your password and so forth. That's always been a bit of a problem, but not during the pilot. Most people did very well for our pilot. Okay? <coughs> View and edit on a workbook was the key thing, because it looks different on the iPad. It looks very different on the iPad, and that was the, the key thing, challenges that we had. Okay. Um, writing up meetings, mentors wanted to do that. They were, they were either wrote on the workbook rather than feedback. We had some issues with that. The commissioners are uh, going to look at Wi-Fi for us, so Health Education East Midlands are going to go around and have a look at that, see so if they can implement that for us, okay, and see how that goes. Okay. Um, the success is really. Um, it's really winning the hearts and minds of the key stakeholders that you can, I think is the problem there. And that's going to be our, our mentors. We, we win the students anyway, because we're going to give them an iPad. But the mentor, if we can win them over, okay, with that, we should be on a way on the way with that, okay. Some are good at it, some are not so good at that, okay. Okay. Um, it's still very early for me there, but I'm doing slowly. So the, the, the disorientation in the paradigm shift is as, as, as small as possible. So the future plans then, I've got to evaluate and publish my little evaluation of the pilot, iron out a few little issues, okay, I might need to come back to payroll, I don't know yet there on that. Um, there, it'll be a Wi-Fi crusade, I think, going round. There's um, a lot of portfolio we need to develop, and I think somebody talked about snowballing it all. Once you get people on board, it will champion itself and, and it'll be less of a, a hurdle to go through, okay. I'm not going to overburden the mentors. My boss says, don't make a monster we can't control. Okay, because Pebble is, is big. It, is, it can be huge, and we've got to keep it simple to start with. Okay? The acorns is what we need to start with. Okay? And then, finally then, um, uh, you asked how does it prepare, support, and empower these, these guys here then. Um, these guys are now qualified. That's why they're smiling. They're just starting on 23,000, you know, for an eight or five job. That's not bad going, is it, for the, for the two years there. Um, so preparing them, it's more about holistic practice. It's those um, inextricable links you can make between the, the outcome with professional cognitive and psychomotor skills there. And, of course, it'll help with the CPD later on. It's a more efficient process, so they're getting, it's better support for them, okay? They see the relevance and the motivation will come with that, okay, with all that sort of stuff, okay? And the, it's more valid and more reliable, so we would improve the confidence in the student coming towards the end of their training course then, that they have those skills, okay? Because they've thought more about demonstrating them. And the empowerment really is that, um, yes, it's more about self-reliant researchers, self-reliant thinkers, that they can take that on board. A lot of key skill development can be used with portfolio building, we've found. Um, a lot more planning skills and a lot more with reflective practice. And that was one of the major things of the evidence that they used was a far more detailed reflective practice. Okay. So, another old friend, Yoda, said then, because I've committed myself then, do or do not. There is no try. If you're going to do it, you've got to do it. And that's where we're at now. Uh, thank you for listening. Any questions? Yeah, they had logged into Atlas. And, and how, how did you manage that from the remote? Well, in the pilot, it's quite small at the moment, you see. So I only had 10 mentors, that was easy. I just logged them in and then found a way of setting sets so they only saw their, their two students, what they were seeing. That was really easy. I found that quite nice as well. Um, but the initial thing is we can't roll out to hundreds and hundreds of mentors because they'd be uncontrollable. We've got, we've got to think. Well, the first cohort that ever goes through the first year lot, we only need one or two mentors to champion that. Okay? Once they start going through, then we can start building it. It'll be a snowball effect. I don't have the resources to roll it out across to this. Okay, so you've got to find your allies.
so we work for the National School of Healthcare Science in the West Midlands and Deputy, NHS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, could you talk a little, little bit more about your crusade? Because we're going to be embarking on a national crusade ourselves with regards to Wi Fi and hospitals. Mm -hmm. um, how are you using the lefties and um, how they how they how, how they kind of committed to helping you? Because well, we're doing it regionally at the moment. We're going to have a similar problem, but yeah. we're going to have a national problem. Sure. Um, we, we've got H. Well, it were let be now, but health education yeah, so, yeah, so, um, so our we have regular meetings with our tri triangle reviews, um, course reviews, and so forth. And then the last review said, we just mentioned Wi-Fi. So let us know. We will go around put pressure on because what the, the commissioners do, they provide a training tariff to the NHS trusts. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you can here, because the money comes into the trust, okay, for training to be spent. Training. Now, where does that go? Yeah. Where does that go? Who gets that pot of money? Where does it? Because I know, for my profession, there's no money ring fence for that. It's sucked into somewhere else. Okay. So we, the commissioners, are going to look at where does that money go? Because we're saying we need Wi-Fi. You want innovation. You want movement like this. And then they're going to do the crusade. I'm going to so look at that. They're going to. They well, they promised me to do that. Yeah. I've still got the, uh, the numbers of all IT managers in every trust, and we'll personally visit them. Personally, going to visit them on that. Yeah. Can I just ask a question about the, the iPads? Yes. Um, in, in terms of, were you involved in the distribution of the iPads, or was it centrally involved in? Uh, to the school, our school, yeah. What, what was the support for that? If the students had a problem with an iPad, or did they drop one, or? Yes. It's theirs, their responsibility. Once you give it out, that's, that's it. it. It's gifted to them for their learning. We accept no responsibility. They just sign up and say, in the they come in a pallet, box them, yeah, sign that, off you go, that's yours, good luck. And that's how we do it. And that med school is exactly the same. It's their responsibility. They break it, they pay for it. Okay, they leave early, we give them a little clause, please hand it back. If you've done hard, six months of the course, you can keep it. Have you had any say to you, already got one, can I have the money value on it? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, I've given them high pads, people have brought in different um, uh, tablets. Yeah. They're not necessarily using them, but that's their prerogative to do that. One girl in the first week, trod on hers, but that's, so we asked her to go down the Apple shop. She went down there and she got a new screen fitted, so they're very kind to her and that sort of thing. So generally, that's it, it's not our responsibility, we're gifting that to them as a learning thing. And it means that we're also engaging more interactive learning and the paper money saving <coughs> exercise is fantastic. And what would you um, anticipate the impact of being if your institution cannot provide iPads to students and then having to try and get access to them for more computer Yeah, yeah, that would that would yes. Um, that would have been interesting because we it was amazing that you went to iPad med school you did, because the whole university works on Microsoft. But they didn't like the platform for that, they found the stability was with, with, with Apple in that sense. Okay. Now, if they hadn't gone for that, we could still do it could be because again, we've got PCs and so forth, and people, the students have got tablets themselves and so forth, and they, you know, they've got study time in a week which they can use for portfolio building. I was listening intently about um, having time to do this, okay. and that's the, in our uh, curriculum, is to weave in more portfolio building time. But yeah, if they hadn't, that might have been a, a different decision. Perhaps. Yeah, they like that. No paper. They can't lose the the module handbook. In theatre, you know, there's a lot of stuff. You know, our module handbooks have a plastic coating on them because of the blood and stuff that gets everywhere. And that can be left in drawers and lost. Mentors will be. You, you, you can hear this, can't you? I'll I'll write that up later, and they take students' coursework handbook home, and they write it up. They don't come in work on Monday, they've gone on our annual leave, the students are up ready for submission, they make a late submission, well the mentor's got it into it doesn't exist with Pebble. It's there. And so but yeah, it might have been a different decision if we ended up the iPads. But I think we were made going that way anyway. We were looking at the NHS e portfolio. Med the lesson med school's gone with the NHS e portfolio. But we look I looked at a few of those. That was just too clunky and it was only really designed for medics and, and their ones and twos and so forth. So we couldn't really go that way. It didn't serve a purpose. It's not creative enough. It didn't capture anything in that. And the ability, uh, again, listening to what's going on today about the CPD point of view, um, that you know we can certainly one of my professional modules, 
we would get around to designing a CPD workbook to meet the HCPC's criteria and how that could flag up an easy way of doing that. So, but yeah, it has massive benefits. Yeah, we'll take Staff, the staff, um, when I mentioned staff, just this thing's bleating at me for some reason. Um, staff um, I, um, was one of my tutors, um, is, is quite resistant to IT and innovation. He wants to retire. And so he's going to take a new one. And he can understand that sort of thing. So there's a little bit there about saying, no, 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 we don't need to do this. Why, what's wrong with what we've got? And we put the drivers there. Um, so, but that wouldn't migrate onto to our cohorts, because so, so that would be our closed doors discussion there. The, the other would be when we went out and I trained, so I took a mentor and a student, and so we went through what the portfolio could do for the students, so both mentor and student had that input. And then we turned it, we took the student out of the chair, put the mentor in, and did the Atlas bit with there. Um, and I didn't get any bleed over, anything coming out from there, it was all quite enthusiastic stuff. But I was probably looking because I got allies to come on board for that. Um, I did get one or two men, oh, oh, I'm not sure, you know, that sort of in initial thing about this. And, <coughs> and so, um, but they, they did quite well actually. And then one student was in turmoil domestically, personally, and, uh, and she said, I'm not going to do anything with this. And yet her pilot um, one is the best. I don't know what happened, just made a really nice job of it and engaged with everything. But I, I don't know, it's human factors you have to find your habits. Okay, I think maybe if uh, um, Andrew's staying the whole day as well, I think. Or yeah, yeah. If okay. anybody, if you get a Wi-Fi and you want to show anybody what the workbook looks like, um, you might have a queue now. Uh, um, yeah. That would probably be great. And, and we'll try, we've built that time in this afternoon, so, um, so hopefully as well. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much.